Suppose f is xi plus yj, so that's just x comma y if you put it in component form like we've been doing with most of these tonight. Find the value of the integral f dot dr visually. Um, what does this vector field look like if you graph a, a, a sampling? The, the vectors point radially out from the origin. You know that, in fact, I graphed this exact one in, in, in the video from 16.1. And in fact, if you made like something on the circle itself, uh, the input, the output would be something like that, wouldn't it? The same length as the radius, right? The output would be something like that. And I'm trying to make that length look the same. And it'd be radially outward, right? But it's not quite perfect. Something like that, right? And then a whole bunch more if I, if I had the time. So the question is, is the integral less than 0, greater than 0, or equal to 0? So this is the line integral with respect to the vector field. And by the way, you're supposed to say that the first time you see this. What? <laughs> you're supposed to say that. So is this? Equal, less than zero, greater than zero, or equal to zero? Um, okay, what was, what was the original way we came up with the, the line integral? It was, what was the integram? F dot T DS, right? I know, information overload, right? But if you look at any one of these vectors, the unit tangent vector, I didn't, I didn't give you the parameterization, did I? But it doesn't matter. The unit tangent vector is either going to go, so if we look at this point, it's either going to go this way or the opposite way, depending on the parameterization, right? Either way, those two vectors, t and this particular value from f, they are orthogonal because t is pointing radially, or f rather, is pointing radially outward from the origin. t is tangent to the curve. So what's the dot product between two orthogonal vectors? Zero. If you add up a whole bunch of zeros, that's so all of these would be zeros, right? If you add up a whole bunch of zeros, you get zero. Does that make sense? OK. So now look at what's happening. We've got the vectors from F in blue here. We've got our curve in red. Um, look at how it's oriented, kind of traveling, traveling. Uh, I guess, uh, northeast uh, a little bit. And it's the same question. Do you think the value of the integral over CF dot dr, that's, that's the line integral with respect to the vector field, do you think that's going to be less than 0, greater than 0, equal to 0? What do you think? Take a guess. It won't hurt. Guess again. <laughs> so what I, yeah, what I need you guys, this is how I need you guys to think. OK, this, this integral, the original way we presented it was f dot t ds, right? OK. So think in terms of t. What would t look like, say, here? Uh, I better use purple. What would t look like, say, here? Or what would it look like here? Maybe something like, it's hard to see, but something like that. What would it look like um, here? It would maybe be like that, right? So what's the angle between, generically speaking, or generally, I should say, speaking, what's the value of this angle here, here, and here? So what am I talking about? I'm talking about the angle F, the angle formed by F, uh, a vector from the vector field, and T, a unit tangent vector. Is it generally acute, obtuse? I would say acute, right? OK. So then to answer this question, you have to remember something from chapter 12. What's the alternate definition of the dot product, u dot v? Magnitude u, magnitude v, times the cosine of the angle between them. Does that, does that ring a bell? 
Yeah. Okay. If this angle is acute, what's the value sine wise S I G N of the cosine in the first quadrant cosine's positive, right? Okay. Then that means that if, if this guy is acute, that means that the dot product is positive because we're assuming non-zero vectors, right? So magnitude u is positive, magnitude v is positive, cosine theta is positive when theta is acute. So you've got a positive times a positive times a positive. It's a positive, right? It's greater than zero. So if this angle between f and t is always acute, as it seems to be, so we're, we're, you know, this isn't a, an exact science what we're doing here, but it seems to be that, that the angle between f and t is going to be acute every time, right? Well, then what can you say if the angle is acute, then f dotted with t is going to be greater than zero over that curve anyway, right? So what can you say about an integral with uh, an integrand that's always positive? You, you, can, you can assume that it's going to be positive as well. So it's, it's this one. Does that, does that help? OK. And then you could probably guess at this one just by process of elimination. So part C, uh, what's the value of the integral? Is it less than 0, equal to 0, or greater than 0? Less than zero. The argument here is, OK, look, the direction of motion is kind of uh, clockwise, right? And the vectors in blue are kind of pointing against the direction of motion. So if you drew like t, t right here would maybe, well, you'd, you'd have a hard time telling the difference between t and the curve because it looks very linear right there. But t right here might look like that, right? t right here might look like that. I'll make it longer than it should be just so you can see it. So the angle between t in purple and the vectors looks like, in general, the angle is obtuse. So using that same formula involving the cosine, what's the cosine of an obtuse angle? Negative, right? So that the dot product would be negative. And so the value of the integral should be less than zero.